All right, we're here in the Hungarian Cultural Garden, the upper level on East Boulevard, and we're here with uh, Hall of Famer Ernie Mihaly, who knows the garden as well as anyone, who's kept it, made it beautiful over all these years. And he's gonna tell us a little about it. Here, we're Ernie, we're in front of this beautiful gate here. What's, what's the story with this? Well, the, the gate uh, was installed in 1938. It was dedicated uh, that year, the same year that we dedicated the entire garden uh, to Franz Liszt, uh, who was a Hungarian composer. And uh, we had William Penn Insurance sponsored it through the United Hungarian Societies. And about 10 years, 15 years ago, we cut it in half and had it taken out and refurbished because it was rusting out and the little rosettes and flowers were all reinstalled. And uh, it's a beautiful piece of architecture that we have for the Hungarians. Let me do a quick pan of this beautiful gate here. How tall is it, do you know? Uh, Got to be 20 feet or so, no right? More than that. It's, about, it's about 15 feet. 15 feet. Yeah, Here you can see, feet. 1938. Is there yeah. any told us? And there's these nice benches built in. Nice. Uh, it, now is this Hungarian style architecture? Yes. Yes, it is. So in Hungary, you might find something oh, like many this. Many of them. Any of this. Mostly out of wood. Mostly out of wood. Okay. So here we have this gate. But if we look toward. East Boulevard here, we have another gate up there. We have another, that's an ornamental uh, arch uh, for the shrubs to cover for an entranceway. And what's this fountain? The, well, the fountain, uh, actually the garden was not designed by a Hungarian, and, uh, uh, but, but the Hungarian architecture. And there's many copies. In Hungary you have many fountains. and. Uh, uh, we think it's a beautiful asset, especially at, when you're driving down East Boulevard and you look into the garden and you see the fountain and the gate. And I know on a lot of special occasions like One World Day you'll have Hungarian and uh, U.S. flags well, circling the uh, On One World Day, yes, but we have a, what we call uh, the Budapest Cafe. And we serve Hungarian food and we have music and uh, we have the flags on either side and it's very festive. Now you also, I know you have a lot of uh, great uh, flowers and trees and all. Are, are some of these, aren't some of these trees special? Uh, remember there was some, uh, Carolyn, do you remember that? With the trees? Uh, the these wood? trees here we planted at the uh, dedication in, uh, for the 75th anniversary. And they're flowering dogwoods that were here originally. Okay, so they're not necessarily from Hungary. They're no, just no, beautiful for no, the garden here. No. And but our plantings are all according to the original plan as far as possible. But some were not really indicated on the plan, but uh, those that were, we uh, uh, repeated that same plan. Now, Ernie, were you involved in the original plan at all, or you no, pretty not young the original, then? No. Yeah. No. Any, I'm, any. I'm too, I'm too young for that. Yeah. Any of those people that you remember some of their names we should recognize, uh, or we'd have to look back. None of those people are alive anymore that were here originally. Yeah. Uh, I was here for the dedication of the garden, but I was too young. I was only 12 years old or so, 11 or 12. Yeah. And I don't remember much except there was a large crowd and all the dignitary were in front, the kids were all in the back. <laughs> and was the garden originally two levels? Yes. And it was Liberty Boulevard back it was, then? Originally it was from uh, Liberty Boulevard to East Boulevard, and we had approximately four acres. And uh, about uh, 19, what, 10 years ago, we started working on the lower level with the legacy wall. The first president was a judge of the Cultural Garden Association was uh, Judge Picorni. Yes. Correct? Petrash. Petrash. I'm sorry. Yes. Not Judge Petrash. Judge Petrash. Uh -huh. Is that a Hungarian name? Yes. Petrash. 
and uh, there, there were numer numerous politicians that were involved years ago, not only in our garden, but all the gardens. And uh, unfortunately, uh, it became a sort of a disaster area after so many years, neglected uh, not only the Hungarian, but all the gardens. And fortunately, we had a few people in the Federation that kept at it, and today, uh, I think we have a great success here in the gardens. Better go that way. Okay. Not easier, but nicer. Yeah. So here we have this big courtyard here where you have concerts and musicians. And on the right is the list plot where the garden was dedicated to the list in 1938. We'll come zoom in on. When I first started and uh, got started here, there were no flowers, there were no shrubs, some of the urns were gone, uh, there were, the fountain was in disaster shape, and slowly we became involved, more people came and called, and actually about 10, 15 years ago we had a group of people that were very interested, and the president is Caroline Baylog, as you know, and we have done great things since then. These urns are something, it just... Well, we, we have... Uh, th this section of the garden... Actually, we have a multi-level garden. Ours is truly a garden that you can walk through and enjoy. It's not only dedicated to certain people. Right. But it's for everyone. It's uh, kind of treacherous to walk, though. So. But it is, it's a garden, it's natural, it's not... It's really a garden. It's not concrete. And it's beautiful. These curved benches built in. We have the benches where people came years ago and uh, they enjoyed themselves. And even today, uh, we have many weddings here that uh, people have to go to the city of Cleveland to get a permit to have a wedding but they enjoy it and it's not only Hungarians, non-Hungarians use it more than Hungarians. Yeah, it's just a great setting. These cutouts here. Then we'll be coming up to this little monument here. This is of a scholar uh, who was very much involved in the city of Cleveland and uh, then we have at the far end, we have a poet, a Hungarian poet, Adi, and there's many books that he has written, translated from Hungarian into English. Well, how do you pronounce that? Remenyi? Remenyi. Remenyi. And he is actually a, a Clevelander. What's that? He was a Clevelander? Yes. Okay, it says professor, writer, poet, and lecturer, inspiring he, interpreter he, he of life and beauty. He was an educator, uh, more so. The, the other two, Adi and uh, Remenyi. They were the poets. And that's ID? This gentleman was a scholar and very active in the Hungarian community. Okay. And even little touches like those spheres, those concrete spheres, all add to the garden. Well, that's the back of the garden. That's where the Shakespeare Garden starts. And uh, we had a time with setting up the pedestal because it they took it down to put in the top uh, light pole. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna walk to this to get a D better and I'll meet you okay. over there. So here's a D. When all deserted, when I bore my soul crumbling violently, the Lord took me in his embrace, unforeseen silently. 1877-1919, a D. It's poet, Hungarian poet, here in the Hungarian Cultural Garden. Then as we come around the path here, as Ernie says, this truly is a garden. It's not just a uh, collection of monuments. It's great landscaping. And this is just the upper level. There's a lower level as well. So here we are. And this is another scholar, author, and uh, Madach. 
Maraj. Yes. And uh, one of the other members that is no longer with us were the ones that installed the busts on top of the pedestals. Okay. And uh, that should have been on candy camera. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Imri Madach, poet, scholar. Okay. All right. This whole section uh, was redone about 10 years ago. The walkway, the gardens, the shrubs were taken out, and new shrubs were put in. Wow. It was overgrown. This is one of the larger gardens. What, yes? This is one of the larger gardens. Yes, it is. And again, this is just the upper half. Another time we'll go down to what is now MLK and get... Uh... All right, I'm going to walk over yeah, and get... I remember years ago when we, we had the Italian garden. There were very few people. Then it started to get larger and larger and larger. And it's fantastic. We have something here, really, that there's no other place in the world where you have so many ethnic gardens side by side, and we, we get along together. We don't always agree, but we do get along. And you also have an annual Liszt concert here in the Hungarian Garden. Yes. With the world-class performers, they bring in that huge grand piano, and Liszt and yeah, Bartok. Yes, we have the Liszt concert once a year. And uh, Vera, who has a, a music school in Aurora, she brings her own grand piano. Uh, I'd like to say the first year we had her, we provided her with a very nice keyboard. <laughs> and she's very flamboyant. And she says, you can't play list on the keyboard. <laughs> so now she brings her own grand piano at her expense. All right, I'm going to go take a look okay. at list. Thank you, Ernie. We're walking through, this is July, late July 2019, so you see the flowers and plants are all in bloom. It's beautiful here. All this grass here, that's all part of the Hungarian garden. This is the upper level, and in fact, this area here, this grassy area, is where they have the Liszt concert the last few years. And this is the, uh, the first monument, Franz Liszt, Listomania, List from 1811-1886, and it was actually, as Ernie said, 1938 when they dedicated this. It was basically dedicated to uh, because of Franz Liszt, the great Hungarian composer and pianist, and maybe the first rock star. And there's a lot of nice touches in this garden, like these round, uh, these spheres here, and just to tease you a little. The next, you're going to see some amazing things at the lower level too. The legacy wall, the steps going down. It's really a beautiful and well-maintained garden. And then again, The bus. Dan, you know what we said? We're gonna put him here first. Is it Up here? Okay. Okay, I'm just get some last. Good morning. Is that beautiful fountain. Some trees, which are just dedicated. And like Ernie said, if you come on One World Day, you'll see the flags of Hungary and the United States encompassing this beautiful fountain. You can see it from the street, it's really something to see. And like all the gardens, there will be a sign in front. Here's the Hungarian Garden, dedicated October 21st, 1934, 1070 East Boulevard. There will be a flag of the nation. It's not blowing now, but there's the Hungarian flag. And for example, a lot of activity in this garden. So 
Here's a choir from Hungarian singers.